Hello everyone and welcome back to JB Thrill Gaming where today I'm taking a look at Pyre, a really interesting game from Supergiant Games, the makers of Bastion and Transistor, both games I enjoyed quite a bit, Bastion being one of my favorite games of all time. There's a lot of elements in this game, like right now I'm shopping at a store in order to sell items and I can buy items and improve items and things like that that are talismans that help my characters. So there's a role-playing element to the game where characters can have a certain item they bring into the combat, if you will, that we're going to take a look at right here, the rights that are a big part of the game, and they also have skills that they'll level up. All characters in your squad level up. You get uh, some points for experience, whether you win or lose, although I do believe you get more if you win, and this is a big central part of the story but the game really comes in several parts so there is the role-playing element where you have the items and the level ups and you pick which tree to go down and they can make drastic differences in your character there is a lot of text dialogue other games by supergiant focused on kind of the narrator telling you the story whereas in this the narrator is only really available in the actual rights in the things that you play where a lot more of the game is in this dialogue now that may be something you really like or you really don't like i do have to say well other Supergiant games were kind of chamber plays, if you will, with only a few main characters interacting in the story. This game has a lot of characters. You, I think, will end up with over 20 characters in your kind of um, thing that travels around doing these rights by the end of the game, which is pretty amazing. And, well, not only do does each character have their own personality and style they actually play different within the game which is a really cool part so let's get in here to how the game actually works now this whether you want to call it the combat or whatever it is because it's not really combat it's more of a fantasy sports game what i mean by fantasy sports is like sports combined with fantasy elements basically you want to destroy your other team's pyre and you can do that by either running a player with the ball into the pyre which will do damage instantly and then you will lose that player for the next round and here you can see where you equip trinkets and then you can see on the left the abilities that have unlocked for this character so far and there are yes kind of small medium and large characters i'm going to go with one large one medium and one small player for this build and a lot of people compared it to like a basketball style game or blitzball it actually reminds me a little bit of ice hockey on the nes where you can have like a big medium and small player where the big player is more kind of offensive as taking people out and the smaller players are faster just somewhat true here but again each player has some unique things with their skills and abilities the way they jump the way the way they run Run the way they use their aura which we'll get into in a second here that makes each one of those characters really unique which is i think the highlight of the game so while this kind of will look like fast pace action things there actually is some strategy into how you want to build your team the team you're playing against how you want things to work together what you want people to do now here's a deal you can only control one player at a time you see how i threw the ball in there and i'll talk about that in a second and you can sprint with that character you can jump with that character and if you're not carrying the ball you can send out your aura which i just do there however that player just jumped right over mine which was pretty effective move and they were able to get into my player and then they will be out for this next round until someone scores now this time i catch them with just the edge now another interesting thing about this game is each map is different different obstacles normally up until this point the pyres have been in the middle of the map on each side but now they're in the corners just slight differences and you can see different characters will do different amount of damages to the pyre so my real big guy here will actually do like 30 damage now i'm able to switch there and that's a big thing you can take people out by either hitting them with your aura around you but you don't have an aura as the ball car carrier or you can send your aura out and you can pass and you can do all different sort of things but you can only control one character at a time and the computer can also only control one character at a time so watching it should give you a pretty good idea if this looks interesting to you or not i do have to say even if you're not a big fan of sports games you might enjoy this but it probably wouldn't help this is kind of a toned down simplistic sports game with magical abilities now usually there's a thing in the match where like the opponents get upset and try harder or whatever but for some reason they give me a free round to do whatever i want and watch here as i throw the ball in there's a number that goes up if you choose to throw the ball it takes time to build up and if i release the throw too early I won't score the full, for this character's case, 30 points that I could score with this character. If you watch here, I actually throw the ball back to a teammate so that my aura gets back around me and the enemy runs into it. So, 
um, that worked out pretty well. But if you throw the ball, you're not eliminated for the next round. And those are the basics of how the game plays. You do play against a computer. There is an ability to play against AI. You can do local against each other, but there is no online play, which is kind of a big knock on the game. However, I do want to say the game is beautiful. Here we are inside our traveling vehicle or whatever, and we'll, we, as we go, we accumulate more and more characters. We can have conversations with characters there, and there's all kinds of stuff. There was almost nothing in this thing when we started the game, and I'm still relatively early in the game, at least with uh, where this footage is, because I didn't want to give away big major spoilers or anything. But like all Supergiant games, it sounds great, it looks great, and this one is really unique in its mechanisms. For example, here's a new character that I just picked up, and they work entirely different than any other character I've had so far. They leave a trail of aura behind them, and then they can kind of snap and set it all off instantly. And again, here's just a look at how pretty the game is. So you have some big elements, you have a lot of dialogue, and what I think is an interesting story, but you have to be okay with that amount of dialogue. Can you enjoy the game without the dialogue? Well, the fact that it doesn't have online play might hurt it, but if you enjoy the gameplay loop enough, you can kind of skip through. If you are enjoying the story, there are certain things highlighted in red you can look at and get more information. So overall, Pyre looks great, it sounds great, and I really think it plays great, and I don't have very many knocks other than that non-online thing, and if the combat or even even just the story uh, of trying to get out of this place we've all been exiled sounds interesting, I highly suggest checking it out.